Last session, our adventurers returned to the Dulahan's head after an eventful day of revelation after revelation. You all learned about the Raycor curse, a remnant of undeath that lingers across the kingdom of Colburn after the fall of the Alien Reign Empire some seven centuries ago. And, more recently, you learned of the upcoming execution of Priestly Montagor, Vane's old caravan master who Vane had been saving up his hard-earned gold for in the hopes of paying Monty's bond and getting him out of jail. You joined up with Lady Alvis and Priestess Alara, already necks high in their drinking session, and had a few drinks and loaves of garlic bread yourselves, reflecting over what has transpired and what you plan to do next. You retired late into the evening, returning to your quarters for some much needed rest, only for little to be found. Early in the wee hours of the morning, Roshana was awoken by an almighty welt to her midsection. You all startled awake from Roshana's screams, only to find that there was nothing in the room, but Kato sensed something in the corner and attacked it. Using her magic to see invisibility, Roshana saw once more the shadowy figure of the poltergeist you faced but a few days before. Vane called for help using his thaumaturgy, while Rook lit the spectre up once more, zapping it from existence once again with radiant energy. You collected yourselves, just as Sully, the elven gentleman that Kato has a habit of running into, came running to your aid, rapier in hand and his pants halfway down his legs, given that he was just asleep. You assured him that everything was alright and that the ghost was gone, and after a bit more awkward conversation, he bid you good night. Roshana checked the small velveteen box that the poltergeist was reaching for to find that it was still spewing black smoke from within. You bid each other a good night once more and made a plan to deal with the box in the morning. You woke up late the next morning, sleeping in a little to catch up on your missing Zs from the night before. As Vane was leaving the room, you bumped into Luxon du Roy, the very man he was looking to speak to about his friend Monty's condition. After telling him this, and that you dealt with a ghost, he ushered you all back into the room for a private chat. There he advised going to a temple to deal with ridding yourselves of the ghost problem, and then he inquired of Vane what exactly he had done to warrant the guards and Inspector Prickett to come looking for him at the guild. Vane explained that he thought disguising himself as the guild's lawyer would get him an audience with Monty, but Monty was not there. Unfortunately, word of the guild's lawyer looking to speak with Montagor, whom he had no connection to, led the inspector to believe that Vane, who was the sole occupier of the intersection of a very peculiar Venn diagram, had disguised himself as the guild lawyer, and now this shady business is now being reflected back onto the guild. Luxon reminded you that this has become quite the high-profile case, and that you will need to be more cautious moving forward. For now, Duroy has said that he would deal with the guards, offering you a quest to worry over instead. The large reward a potential means of getting Montagor out of jail before his execution in four days' time. Banding together, you accepted the quest and made to leave the guild, but Luxon held Vane back for a bit of a chat. Roshana, Rook and Kato left the housing quarters to find a group of guards and another Luxon, seemingly, speaking with Inspector Prickett, the man who had questioned Vane about the caravan before. Before leaving the guild for the awaiting carriage, Roshana went to the hallowed hall to ask for help regarding the smoking jewellery box the spirit that attacked you seems to be tethered to. You left the box at the clergyman to collect later, and for now have basically dusted your hands off of the spooky mess. Meanwhile, Vane asked Luxon about the discrepancy in the amount stated for Montagor's fine. From what he gathers, Montagor's debt lies at 3,000 gold pieces, whilst the fine he faces for bringing <coughs> a contraband into the city lies at 2,000 gold pieces, meaning a total of 5,000 gold pieces has to be paid to see Montagor free. As for the reason why the sentence has been changed to execution and has been expedited, Duroy expected it had to do with Monty's inability to pay off the massive fine, as well as being left to the whim and probable lack of mercy of the Evansworn presiding over the case. So to reiterate where things stand, paying off the 2,000 gold could see Monty saved from execution, but until an additional 3,000 is paid, he is likely to remain in prison. The execution is said to happen on Kernavi, and it is currently Kerluni, 
so you all have roughly four days to collect the money and pay off the fine to hopefully ensure Montagor's survival. In addition, Vane inquired about Montagor's wealthy brother, Montague, and if he would be willing to pay the fine. Leroy, however, told you that it was unlikely, as the two brothers had a massive falling out years ago, and apparently the grudge runs deathly deep. Vane apologised for bringing this back onto the guild, and was thankful to Luxon for helping him out by bringing him to the guild when he did. Leroy said to Vane that it was his actions next that would prove if he was really up to working with him, and that his meeting with Baz would have to be on hold for the time being. Vane left the housing quarters and disguised himself to look like a human adventurer to sneak past the guards without drawing too much attention. You all met up at the awaiting carriage and hopped on in, heading towards your destination in the western quarter. After passing by numerous houses, businesses, shipyards, and the warrior's arena, you eventually arrived at the Bitter Row Tavern, a central building to a small fishing and sailing community. There, you met with a Mr. Horace Minthine, an affluent and rather eccentric fellow who is very involved in the community. He has noticed that amongst he and his neighbours that some of their belongings have been going missing. Unfortunately, given the nature of most of these possessions being prized or rarely used, the folks have only realised that their belongings have been taken once it is far too late and they have little indication of when these thefts have occurred. For this reason, and for having no evidence of any break-ins, the local guards were not inclined to help them, given that they were already stretched quite thin over the expanse of the Western Quarter. Mr. Minthine has tasked you all with finding and stopping the culprits, as well as hopefully retrieving some of the stolen items. He has set you up in the Bitter Row Tavern for the time being, with bed and board paid for, leaving you to do the heavy lifting and investigating. When pressed for some more information about the missing items, Horace mentioned that his own sterling silver dinner set that he had put away for special occasions had gone missing, which he found odd as he certainly had more valuable items in his home. He then quipped that the tavern had also had some money stolen, to which the barkeep, Yulia, corroborated, stating that she thought someone had chanced their arm and stolen the silver pieces when the till was open momentarily. You came to the conclusion that the thieves were targeting silver items, though for what purpose you have yet to find out. Mr. Minthine decided that a community meeting would be in order to help get a list of the missing items together. After bidding him adieu and setting up your own rooms, you set about your investigation. Rook took the helm by inquiring with an unlikely source, a stray ginger tabby cat with a crooked canine that poked at an angle out of its mouth. After a bit of back and forth and the promise of food to come, the tabby cat told you about an increase in the number of a particular creature. The creatures were small and shiny, and they came out to land from the ocean at night. The creatures mostly left the cat alone, aside from a time where he got too close and received a cut across the top and underside of his paw. The creatures were weird and not good to eat, tasting a bit funny. Upon reaching the tavern and Rishana purchasing a hulking raw sea bass and placing it down for your new feline friend, the cat finally gave you your answer. Crabs. Rook, convinced that the crabs were behind the thefts, relayed the information to the rest of you, acting as a kitty translator. Kato was certainly a lot more dubious, while Roshana was intent on giving the cat a name, seen as he didn't have one. So you now have a cat friend called Crab, though he doesn't know what it means himself. After being battered with a dry broom, having asked the local folks if they had crabs, Vane decided against more conventional investigating. Instead, he gussied himself up, with some help from his new hat, into a version of himself with a bit more flash. Nothing that looked too influential, but had some visible wealth, in the hopes of becoming a potential target for the perpetrator. Kato and Roshana conducted an investigation of their own, meeting with a young girl and her mother at their home, and learning about a stolen silver mirror and brush set, as well as money from the girl's piggy bank. These items went missing on separate occasions, but both were presumably silver, and both were kept on the upper floor of the house. No signs of forced entry were found around the windows or doors, either. On returning back to the tavern, 
he spotted a group of children carrying buckets of worms towards the docks, presumably to sell them as bait to the fishermen there. One of the boys, a smaller child, didn't have a bucket and instead was using the lower half of his shirt to carry the worms. One of the older children tripped him and sent both him and his worms flying. Cato helped the poor boy up and gave him a cup from his mess kit to salvage the remainder of his worms before you headed back into the tavern. Rook, meanwhile, wild shaped into a reef shark and got to enjoy his first time swimming through the waters in animal form, fully adapted to the environment. Looking around on the sandy ground, Rook did spot a few crabs, but none that fit the description given by your feline friend. In addition, neither the crabs, nor anything else for that matter, paid attention to the little silver trap Rook had set up within the water. To your surprise, on everyone returning to the tavern, it seemed that word had gotten around about this community meeting, and most of the locals had come into the tavern to share their news, as well as for the free booze. Mr. Minthine, along with his helpers, set about gathering a list of missing items from the folks, leaving the rest of the talking, or interrogation rather, to you. After a few pointed questions and a few broken hearts after Rashana cast a zone of truth on half of the patrons, you learned that whilst the majority were there because of the missing items, about a quarter were there to try their luck into scoring some of the goods for themselves. This is a poor community, and silver is definitely sought after. Tensions were running high, some of the patrons turning on each other, but you kept them in check and kept the conversation going. One gentleman in particular told you about a potential six-month window of when these thefts started. Another spoke of actually seeing his bucket with the silver handle being taken away in the wee hours of the morning. Though he could not see the perpetrator, he said that the bucket seemed to move on its own and towards the inner part of the city, before he lost track of it, of course. After the rabble died down and a few shots of the potent Inky Stinky, the more quote-unquote luxurious drink of choice in the tavern, you decided to head to bed. Rook hoping to concentrate on changing his spells around while Vane stayed on the main floor, keeping an eye on a stack of silver in front of him for the night. Despite his best efforts, it was a long, long night of staring, staring and staring at the stack of coin, drifting off for but a moment, realising on snapping himself awake that one of the coins from the stack was missing. Vane put a hand on the coins and checked his coin purse to find it slashed, with all the silver missing and the rest of his coins scattered on the floor. Turning quickly on his feet, Vane caught a glimpse of a tiny pale crab scuttling with great speed out the door. He chased after it, spotting it just in time as it plinked into the ocean. A quick shout and everyone was on their feet. Rook dashed down into the water and turned quickly into a reef shark, looking about him for any sign of the crabs but they were gone. You gathered yourselves and headed back inside, only to find another crab scurrying away from you, holding Rashana's old silver amulet in its claws. You gave chase after it just as it made for the back door, Kato using his telekinetic powers to wrench the amulet from the crab's grasp, but it continued scuttling on, though in the opposite direction of the water. You decided to give chase to the pale crab, and that is where we will pick up. I know, I know the map kind of ends here, but, uh... Okay, let's get an idea of what you guys are doing. Um, Rook, I know, mm -hmm. ran upstairs to see if the amulet that was given to him by Horace Minthine um, is still there. Mm -hmm. uh, Vane, you're standing out by the docks currently? Uh, well, yeah, that was because I didn't... Like, last session, I, I don't think... Or, like, so, yeah, last session. I don't think um, I knew that the... Um, my coin was on the floor. Oh, okay, so I'm assuming you would have come in and yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like here now. Yeah, picking up, picking up machine. My money. Of the important things. <laughs> okay, and Kato and Rashana, you just watched this crab and it was scuttling with great speed away from you. What would you like to do? Mm -hmm. Zoom. Give a chase. Okay. Maybe over. Oh, there's another one. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> As Vane's picking up his his 
Manny and sees Roshana and Kato run out of the back, he'll just go, Godspeed! Godspeed. <laughs> I'm helping. <laughs> Did you want to give inspiration? <laughs> if you have it. I don't have to touch him. No, you don't. Do you? No. No. Oh. You just have to uh, hear yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll give inspiration to Kato. Okay. Just throw, oh. throw her up there, please. And you guys oh, are yeah. starting here at Le Tavern. <laughs> the fin- finish line. <laughs> um... Roll 20, come on, play for me, please. That would be very nice if you played for me. It would. Oh. There we go. Hooray. Okay. Hooray. So, Le Quab has just glittered away from you. Oh my god, 90 feet. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Oh, Jesus. It's a fast bugger. Uh, its turn basically has gone, so what would you guys like to do? I'm gonna dash. dash. Okay. You, you run on up, up to the 60 foot mark. Yep. And now I think we should roll initiative. Very well. Oh boy. Make sure to hit your token first before. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Why? Oh, no. oh, Why? Roshana. Sorry, you guys. You're going to have to add together my phone. I didn't clear it last time. <laughs> Look at that. You get a second chance. I wish. I'm fucking watching you. <laughs> oh, my. Oh. <laughs> Now it's the other way around. <laughs> oh dear. I got a 14.16. Oh, I, I don't like what the crap got. Oh my god. Insane. <laughs> how? I'm picking up money. <laughs> That's and, how. Uh, yeah, I should probably drag Rook onto here as well. Mm-hmm. Don't worry, guys. We've got them. Turn into a fucking faster crab. Super crab or something. Yeah, turn. Uh, I probably didn't need to do that. It's so weird when you're not using the... Uh, oh no. What did... No, it's not bad. E... Descending. Okay. Crabby. Is no, oh, no. Sorry, looks not meant to be there. Uh... <laughs> okay. Krabby goes running down uh, one of the alleyways. You see, he's going full tilt. He rounds a corner and he disappears. Round the corner, of course. Okay, next up we have got Roshana. We've just seen this crab scurry away about ooh, how many feet? I think that was another sixty. No, Roughly more. 80. 50. Yep. Eighty. Yeah. Uh, just uh, turned around the corner. I'm just gonna dash after it. Okay. Oop. Alrighty. You run the 60 feet and you've seen now that the crab is it's in a dead end. And it begins oh. like turning left and turning right and seems rather confused. Uh so you can see it again. There we go. Okay. Uh Rook having just gotten the uh the silver amulet that Horace Minthian had given to him. Uh he is going to leave it where it is and he looks out the window and j- just as you guys have just sprinted away uh, i'm assuming at this point he kind of just sees vane standing there clutching a load of coin in his hands <laughs> so the rest of you scurry o- scurry off um hold on a second now can see where he was apologies now there's a lot of jumping back and forth here Mm-hmm. 
Well, that's meant to be the tavern, but he's gonna go towards the window. Here, and I'm just gonna see what wild shapes he's got available. Fucking super fast burb. Peregrine Falcon. The burb's a bit much for him. Oh, um. A uh, walking Peregrine Falcon. <laughs> Peregrine Falcon with no wings. Hmm. A cheetah, they're quick. <laughs> Apologies now, I don't know I have to do this. Uh hmm. That's interesting. Okay. Uh Rook is going to use his movement to jump out the window. seen this before no don't say that jump out the window and yeah. um yeah i'm just gonna give him an athletics check just for the shits and giggles of it giggles. He uh, yep he lands uh bit sore on his foot, but he is going to wild shape into a raptor. Eh? Wow. Eh. A raptor. A raptor. Yeah, and we'll get back to him in a second. Uh, but we'll say for the purposes of the chase that he is now on the line of the tavern. Mm -hmm. Let's move you back. Okay, next up we have Kato. Oh boy. You've just seen Roshana Tear around the corner ahead of you. Man, Axe and Surge would be so nice right now. Zoom, <laughs> Jash. <laughs> okay. Jash. <laughs> yep, and you stop just beside Rashana as you see this crab is kind of like turning left and right. Um, just a couple of feet before you in the middle of the road at this. Uh, Kind of like a dead end of an alley. Anything else you'd like to do? Oh boy. Uh... Hmm. Where are my features? Uh, okay. Um... Oh, that requires an action. Never mind. I guess I'll do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, next up, we have uh, Vane. What would you like to do? Um, I You've just like seen to... a. Well, it's not giant, but like a rather large looking raptor just fall from the sky <laughs> beside you. He looks over towards you. My, like. Wildly aware that it's rugged. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm like, uh, how many coins have I picked up? Uh, just draw me an investigation check, please. Uh. Uh, fuck's sake! I hate laptops. Open. Thank you. Investigation, yeah. Oh. Well, you're getting them out now. Uh, you found maybe like an eighth of the coins that you had. <laughs> uh, pick up coins. Okay. <laughs> hey. Excuse me. Is that it, Fane? Yeah, I'd like to use my bonus action and action and movement to pick up coins. Okay, very good. And I'd like to action surge and pick up coins. Okay. 
<laughs> Are you a fighter? Yeah, I am. No. When, when it comes to money. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, I'm gonna also refresh. This is refresh. what the inflation is. Refresh because um, we're running two natural ones in a row. No, not, not dealing with that. <laughs> Alrighty. The crab turns around towards you, sees the two of you standing there. And then it runs over to one of the walls and begins climbing it. Oh my god, no! It starts scurrying back uh, in the direction that you guys came from. It's up on the wall, though. Uh, if you guys want to take a swish or a grab of it, yeah, if you can. I would, I, would, I would love to. Okay. Same. What's the plan here? Are you going to hit it or are you going to just grab um, let me tell you my idea, and then uh, I'll see what you decide. Okay. I I I want to like flip and football kick it off the wall. What? <laughs> so it's back. <laughs> you want to? Sorry, flip and football kick it off the wall. Like you're running up to the wall, you're flipping, and you're. <laughs> Kicking it up and into the air, basically. <laughs> uh, not uh, not up into the air, but uh, you know, some football players might might uh, do like a flip and then kick the ball back into the uh, <laughs> back into the field. <laughs> a bicycle kick backwards, basically. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. <laughs> Certainly. Uh, acrobatics or athletics, your bloody choice. Okay. <laughs> Oh, oh 21. Wow. Ready, run. <laughs> Expertly, you run towards the wall just as this crab is just about to scurry around the corner once again, and you bicycle kick backwards. You're like flicking the crab without hurting it, just <laughs> into the air. <laughs> so it's I'm gonna move it back now. No, don't turn off fog of the war. It's basically now on the same path as you. And Roshana, what would you like to do? I'm gonna grab it. Okay, go for it. Uh, uh yeah. this will be a athletics check for a grapple. Nice. No. Oh no. I'd say it's at advantage because you know you've basically thrown it up into the air. <laughs> um I'm just gonna roll its acrobatics and see how it does. Catch it, Rashana! And with that, Rashana, you grasp the crab in your hands. Nice! Yay! And you just feel his little legs scurrying beneath. Oh. Do I notice anything different about the crab from normal crabs? Uh, Besides its color. Yeah. Ooh. Give me a just a general perception check, please. Perception. Twelve. Yeah. Hmm. Well, even just following it, you realise that these crabs are incredibly speedy and quite small. I mean, you've got it between your two hands and aside from the legs poking out underneath, it's it's not much bigger. It definitely seems less natural and potentially of the arcane world. Ah. Hmm. Okay, we got it. Let's get this we thing in it. like a jar or something. Yeah. And maybe Rook can talk to it? Yeah. So at this point, you see dong, 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 running up to you, a <laughs> wow. giant raptor. You kind of just skids on its two feet and looks down at you. Rook, is that you? It just blows past its two nostrils. Pretty foul smelling breath. <laughs> yeah. Uh. 
Shana, uh, is this? Uh, I'm. This is not something that appears in the city, so I don't. I. I don't know. You do watch this is Rook. <laughs> the form begins to shrink again and melds back into Rook's natural form. Uh, shorter. Uh, not too short, just 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 shorter than, you know, bloody raptor. But uh, he goes, uh, sorry. Um, I was hoping to chase after you, but uh, yeah, I ended up exerting myself more than I should have. But you've got it, I think. We yes? caught it. That's correct. I'm, I'm holding it up. Yes, we, uh, we get this thing into some sort of hard container where we can keep an eye on it. Uh, uh, do we have something? Uh, does anyone have, like, a, a jar? Hmm. Mm. We should start getting back to the tavern. Maybe they have a bucket or something there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Head so, back to tavern. Crab now in hand, you head back to tavern. Me. Does it have uh, veins and silver? It does not, no. Oh no! no not the right there were other crap. This is this is just one crap. I think this uh, is the crap that crabbed my face. Oh. Yeah, that's right. Because I took it. I took mm. it back. Yeah. <laughs> well, once we have this uh, crab contained, I can try and speak to it. Yeah, I was suggesting that mm. just now. Mm. One one moment, Rashawn. Let me see the crab. Yeah, sure. I'll show uh, you later. In, we'll inspect the crab. Does it seem mechanical? Oh, ooh, give me an investigation check, please. Oh. Got him. Damn! Oh. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <dude. sighs> oh, it's just, always the worst just, one. <laughs> just like the one shot I had last night. Oh, I only get oh. natural twenties when it doesn't matter. <laughs> that is the one of the dice okay. for you. Yeah. Yes. Mm. I mean, it might okay. not be mechanical, but it is of arcane origin. So. Mm. <laughs> sort of you hear the clicking of the legs mm -hmm. moving as uh Rashad is holding on to it and you inspect it. Very ghostly okay. panel. Hmm. Yeah, let's get this thing inside. Yeah. Looks weird. It it does. Mm. It's very tiny. Barkeep, are you around? It's nine. I think she sleeps. <laughs> she sleeps. <laughs> <laughs> I thought she was still up. Um, hey, hmm. hey. Mm. I think he's got to let the dogs out in his head. No, no, yeah. I, I just literally go back. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm still looking for money. Um, yes, Rook? No, we just we had the crab. We caught the crab. Ah, excellent. Did it have my money? No, it doesn't. No, it, it did not. Well. Take us to your leader, I... I, I continue grabbing my gold that was on the floor. Um, we need to find some way to contain it. Perhaps um, some sort of 
the glassware. Um, I'm sure there must be something in the kitchen. Um, maybe find. Um, I'm gonna hop over the counter. Okay. I would probably, I would probably ask. Okay. No one's awake. So yeah. Okay, yeah. but you hop behind and you see a bunch of different uh, kegs and cups. Little Stein or a little girl. Uh, various different wine bottles as well. Some of them are empty. Um, yeah, you take a good look at the. Well, Beauty's not there. I need to move her token. Sorry. <laughs> um. Do I see other like glass steins? Uh, there's one or two. They seem to be a lot more decorative. Mm. Jar full of pickled eggs. Give me an investigation check. <laughs> I'm looking for money as well. Yeah, investigation for egg. Um, I'll I'll take one of the glass ones. Okay. Go pay him back later. Grab one of the glass signs off, one of the glasses off of the shelf. Okay, Roshana. Yes. I put the grab. And the thing. Mm -hmm. And you see its little legs begin scurrying as it's um, kind of scraping across the glass bottom, and it immediately begins to start climbing up again. I'm put my hand on the top! Turn it, yeah, I'm gonna turn it upside down and put it on the <laughs> oh, counter. That's better. That's okay. better. Just onto the counter, and yeah, Crab is kind of just scurrying around now in the one little spot, looking around. Now, to make extra, to make extra sure. <laughs> On top of on top of the glass, I will put. Hmm. A whole ass. <laughs> <laughs> I will sit on the glass. S some something heavy. I... <laughs> that ass. <laughs> you can tell I'm a little bit hilarious today. <laughs> You're allowed to be delirious. Thank you. Yes. You know, I'll just put my whole Tinder box. Oh, wow. <laughs> It'll never get out of there now. <laughs> Do you want some help, Can't baby? They lift up buckets. Um, yes, please. Just keep an eye on us. Okay. Uh, Just so you know, like, if it was only an eighth that I found, that was like 42 gold out of the 337 that I currently found. Painful. So, uh, I'm gonna be here until I find it all. Okay. And Rick will help you out. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um. Hmm. So, yeah, maybe think of some questions to ask the crab. If that is his real name. <laughs> okay, question from Vane. Why are you a crab? Okay. Uh, yeah. mm. <laughs> don't ask don't ask that. <laughs> it's not like we only get three questions, I mean. Yeah, true. Why are you I mean, taking who... silver? Yeah. Huh. Who are you taking silver for? Where are you taking the silver to? Give me my silver back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just going to check this because I'm in the spell. I mean, I've got ten minutes so I can ask it different questions. Excellent. Ah. Uh, Did everyone get a rest? No. Uh, I was staring at uh, coins for a, um, until, um, yes, I fell asleep for a moment and and then everything was gone. Yeah, I think. Mm, Kato and Shoshana, if you headed up to bed, 
not long after Rook, I believe, after you eat, you had your dinner. Yeah. Yeah. Rain, Fane was the only one who really stayed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so... Now I remember. Everyone, bar Fane, though Fane, you do have the benefits of a short rest, whatever that is. Yeah. Ah, but I could use another rest again. Sorry. That's alright. Okay. As in you need another rest to communicate, or...? Oh no! Oh, uh, just, just generally after the communication. After the communication. Oh, okay. good idea. Very well. Um... It takes you about... Can I have all my money back, please? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh... We'll say between you and Rook, and if anyone else wants to pitch in as well, we'll say... You get your money back down to the... Rounded down to the nearest ten. Rounded down? Yeah. To the nearest ten? Yeah. So, I have four silver. <laughs> which, was the, which was four of the five that I put down. I have... Okay, I lose that. How how the fuck do I lose that? That's someone's gonna have a nice time when they fucking search this place. Okay. Well, this has been an expensive day. I'm gonna go cry now. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, before you do that, let's speak to the crab, and then you can cry after, yes. okay? Yeah, Very maybe get well. some answers, and maybe we can find out where he took all your silver. Why? Well, if I get the silver back, it'll just cover what I just lost on the floor. How much did you lose? Seven and a half gold. Hmm. Somehow. I'm gonna start putting up the floorboards in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that would be ill-advised. Why? If I'm one gold piece, I'll be able to pay for it to get put down again. <laughs> oh, Depends right. on how many floorboards you pull up. It's not like everyone you pull up is gonna have a gold underneath it. Mm. Okay, let's ask this little shit some questions. Yeah, I think that would cause more problems than good. Most will do. Mm. Okay. Let's get to asking. Yes. See, Rook stoops down in front of this glass jarred um, quab. And reaches forward with his mind. Where are you bringing the silver to? You see, it's uh, the crab with its little uh, leggies and do crabs have antenna? I don't know, but it kind of cleans. Yeah. It kind of cleans right. its eyes a little bit, and then looks at Rook, and then turns around. Somewhat in the direction that you guys have just run out. And then turns around to him again. You see Rook's eyes narrow. His eyebrows furrow. Oh, no. What's it saying? Why don't any animals want to speak to me? It only speaks Spanish. What if you coax it with, uh, silver? Maybe it'll speak then. Has it not taken enough? Hold silver in front of it, maybe it will react to it. Yeah. You see, uh, Rick pulls, reaches out into his pocket again and pulls out a silver coin of his own. This? You want this? You see, the crab doesn't react. Hmm. Do 
Do you understand me? Click once for yes. <laughs> Click twice for no. <laughs> oh, I suppose that's a bit. <laughs> but you see the crab clicks its claw. Hmm. Then why won't you speak? Hmm. Maybe it simply can't. You said it was arcane in nature. That's what I've noticed from it, yes. <laughs> what does you your... Mm -hmm. Does your animal speech not apply to some magical creatures? Uh, it should if they're a beast. Well, what classifies as a beast? <laughs> Generally, smaller creatures of... Um, it's, it's difficult to describe, but somewhat native to this plane and... Mm. Are found naturally in nature. They can be arcane as well, but I, I don't feel the same connection with this one. Mm. So you're saying it might not be from this plane, then? Possibly. Um. Whatever it is, it's 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 not like any other crab. It's I don't think it's a beast. Interesting. Okay. Or every animal has just decided now that it doesn't want to speak to me, so who knows? Okay, maybe we maybe we keep to the yes or no questions. Mm. Anything else? Hmm. Are you working for someone? See, the crab actually turns towards you, Kato. Seems like it understands me. And... Clicks once with its claw. Its big one. Hmm. Mm hmm yes. Interesting. Sorry, I'll put crappy here. <laughs> baby boy. Hmm. Are you from this plane? The crab turns towards you, Vane, and... It just cleans its eyes again, it doesn't... answer. Hmm. Well, that's just rude. Yeah. Oh, man. How do you formulate these questions to yes or no? Um, are you taking the silver somewhere in the city? One click. <laughs> You're going is to it... be more specific. This is a huge city. <laughs> is yes, I'm going to work my <laughs> way down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is it far away? One click. Did you say something, Roshana? I missed you there. Oh, that actually just... says the opposing question to say. Ah, okay. Oh, is it okay. close by? Is it far away? <laughs> so that was one click. Yeah, for yes. So far away. Okay. Mm. Do you pass by water? Another click. Click oh, how many? Cool. Click for one. Cl um, click for how many rivers you pass? Begins cleaning its eyes again. Oh, this sure. fucking asshole. It's like yeah. it's swiveling back and forth, doesn't really know how to answer. Mm. It looks a bit agitated. Does it look as agitated as me? Not quite, but close. <laughs> I'm sad. Are you being forced to take the silver? Click, click. Mm. No. So you, so you want to take the silver, you little shit. <clears throat> Do you need it for something important? Click for yes. Are there any 
big buildings where well, I guess everything's big to you. <laughs> Especially to this tiny baby. <laughs> Will you take us to where you're taking the silver? Give me a persuasion check, please. Um, Come on, mate, this is your bread and butter. Yeah. Yeah. Natural ones, though, today. Wait, do I? I don't have. Wow. What the fuck, dude? Because uh, you just said that you rolled natural ones. <laughs> See, the crab is looking at you. You know earlier when I said that we shouldn't play tonight? <laughs> the crab looks <gasps> like it wants to click, but it, it just begins washing its eyes again. I hate my life. Uh, so I've, I've literally rolled three natural ones in a row. In a row, yeah. Didn't you well... refresh each time? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe don't this time. Yeah, I'm not going to. Can I, uh... Well... Can I, um... Uh, where are we? Enter views. A creature I can see with it. You can understand me, can't it? Uh -huh. It seems to, yeah. Excellent. Uh, mm, fuck. Uh, I'm gonna cast suggestion on crab. Okay, so we're up there. For description only. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, okay, and now I'm gonna word this. If you allow us to follow you to your to where you're delivering the silver, we may be able to provide you more silver. To help with your cause. So if you would lead us there, that would be helpful for both of us. We can find out what you're doing, and you get more silver. Okay, you cast a spell. I, I cast a spell. The crap stops moving. Oh shit, I killed it. <laughs> Fuck. Well done, Jane. <laughs> I, it was, I thought it was a suggestion, it wasn't. It wasn't. I, I cast dissonant whispers, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Did it work? Um. Uh, I. I'm not sure. Hmm. Ask it. Are, 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 you, are you happy to take us? Click. Insight check. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Insight the clan. <laughs> oh my god. Why? Eh, not a natural one. It's a fucking crab. I mean, what? It's a, it's a not one. I've n I'm not sure how, like... I don't know what the the facial expression like range is on the crab. <laughs> um, well, I mean, it seems to be. If uh, I, I mean, maybe we should try. Be ready to try and be ready to catch us. Yes. Maybe we could tie a little rope around it and take it for a walk. <laughs> Just take a crab for a walk? Yeah. Florida. It's a bit... <laughs> no, that, that's gators. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm 
I'm sure I've got a piece of string or something in my herbalism kit. To be fair, I did see a crab cross the street the last week. Yeah. Standard. Um, well, I mean, uh, I'll slowly take the tinderbox off and hand it back to Kato. Mm -hmm. Put it still... back in my, my, my pack. Yeah, crab is still standing still. I will I... slowly... I, I, before that, I'll say, uh, we're, yeah. we're, not, we're not quite as quick as you, so you need to um, be, you know. Stay close. Yes, don't run full speed, otherwise we'll lose you, and we don't want that. Thank um, and then I will right. kind of nod to Gato. I will slowly pull the stein off. Mm -hmm. And just before we do this, <laughs> all the coins I picked up went back in my backpack. All right. I'm not yeah. carrying. I'm not going to be carrying them in my hands. Like there, out there. In my back, I'm going to have to invest in a new coin pouch. Yeah. The Maybe crab. A coin pouch of holding or something. Oh, you're expecting that much, are you? Uh, well, I, I feel like less crabs can get to it if it's a coin pouch of holding. Fair. Um, Kato, you gently lift the glass stein off, and the crab doesn't run immediately, but it. It swivels a little bit, looking back and forth, and then okay. slowly walks over to the edge and just jumps down onto the ground. All right. Um, I am going to be concentrating on the crab for eight up hours. To, up to eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a good I will hop back over and put the stein where it was. Why am I happy I picked suggestion? Crab scuttles over here and it actually turns towards you again. Seems your spell has worked. Fucking yeah! <laughs> Guys! Some, was... something, something to make up for those net ones. Yeah, and sleep. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. Okay, and the crab begins scuttling and you start following. In the middle of the night, this crab. <laughs> <laughs> into the darkness. It's roughly 2, 3 a.m. Yeah. in the morning. Oh. Yeah. Um, are we still here? You where are the yellow where thing the is? yellow dot is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. I, can't, I can't remember if that was you. Or, yeah. 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 That's where we are. Okay. And you see the crab begins scuffling. It's a scuttle. The direction of the uh, shipyard. Son of a bitch. It scuttles, 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 turns. Scuttles, 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 turns. It does seem a little um, bit impatient at times. You do see it begins jumping up and down every now and then as you're following <laughs> after it. Um, like, are we walking quickly? Not like dash or anything, but walking as, like, yeah. you're power walking. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Some would say even get, jogging. And we need to yeah. get our cardio in, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> All the panicking I've been doing, my heart's been going crazy, so I think uh, cardio. my cardio my cardio is done. <laughs> <laughs> just just from potentially losing money. I say potentially. Have lost money. Sad. So uh Yeah, you reach uh just the edge of the uh, inlet here. It's not showing because I'm using the wrong bloody tool. Of the inlet here. And you see the crab turns towards you and then begins climbing up a wall. And then doesn't immediately jump off the wall but looks down at the river below. Hmm. Uh, can I peer into the river? Yeah. Um, you see that the crab actually lifts up its claw and begins waving to what looks to be a hooded figure down in a little boat in the water. It's quite a steep jump down. How far are we talking? Uh, I'd say just under 10 feet. But you see the figure looks up at you, Kato, as you peer over. He goes, ah! Begins pulling. Is he running? Pulling at rope, it's, he, they're in the uh, boat, 
they begin pulling at the rope and you see the crab um it turns towards you just begins waving its its uh claws frantically i'm gonna i'm gonna get the guy okay how would you like to do that i'm gonna jump down into the boat he's in and i'm gonna grapple him okay it's just a small little robot now <laughs> Just so you know. I, I know, I know. Okay. <laughs> Not that <Nice check. laughs> Very nice. Um, whereas most people would have jumped into the boat, either capsized it or just plummeted straight through the wood and just left a massive hole in the boat. <laughs> Kata, you jump down into the boat and just plump your bum right down onto the um onto this little bench immediately across from this hooded figure who's quite small and just ah! looking at you now what's up oh you've got some questions to answer no i don't oh i think you do no we don't what did you do looking back up at the crab who are you Better question is, who are you? I'm gonna pull the hood off. I asked first! Begins pulling back at the hoods, trying to keep it off. Is there is there a rope going up the uh, the wall? There is, and you see it's tied onto this little, like a metal hoop, uh, stuck into the wall itself. How, how big is this figure? Pretty small. About the size of a child. Okay. Um. <sighs> it's dubious. Let me go. I'm gonna try to climb the rope, grappling, uh, <laughs> grappling this figure, <laughs> or at the very least, tie the. <laughs> <Excuse> <sighs> okay. Give me a athletics check to grapple. Uh. Yep, immediately they just wrench out of your grasp. Um. Get down here! You see the uh, figure puts up two greenish hands, very thin and long-nailed, and you see the crab jump <laughs> off from the um, edge of the wall. The rest of you now have kind of just gathered around and it just clinks down onto into the uh, figure's hands. Now, we can do this the Why? easy way, or we can do it the hard way. Why are you taking people's silver? Well, because I need it. Why do you need it? For? We got mouths to feed. So do the people here. Okay. They got plenty of silver, though. Not everyone. I really don't. More than us. And who is us? Us? Bane's gonna jump down. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> ah, jeez. Excuse <laughs> me, give me enough that check, please. Please, Vane. Uh, natural one, here we go. Holy shit, I rolled more than a natural one. So yeah, Vane jumps down into the water and Vane, your foot just catches the sides of the boat and everyone just tips into the water. God! <laughs> I'm gonna grab the assumedly goblin and the rope tied to the wall. <laughs> wow, Kato! <laughs> wow! Kato going with the racial profiling again. <laughs> Why Come on, it's small, small, small figure, green arms and hands with long gnarled fingernails. Come on could, now, could just, could just shrill voice, shrill voice. Oh, whatever. You're all thinking it. <laughs> We're not 
not speaking it though. <laughs> but yeah, you do see um, a drenched goblin girl, um, large ears, gr uh, yellowish eyes, and you just see her hair now is just plastered against her skin as she's drenched. And you see the hood, hooded uh, cloak that she's wearing is kind of like dragging her down in the water a little bit. That uh, silver crab begins paddling over to her and just grabs onto her arm. I'm gonna say so as Kato grabbed Goblin. I'm assuming? Yeah. I'm holding on to the rope attached to the wall. Yeah. And you see the okay. Goblin begins swimming over to you, Kato. Trying to, at least. Can I grab Goblin? Yep, yeah, sure. Okay. If you cooperate, we may be able to help you. Okay, okay, just get me out of the water. Um, how do I grab Goblin? You just grab Goblin. She's not resisting, okay. so you just grab her. Okay. I want to look her right in the face. Up. <laughs> and say, give me back my money. I don't have any. Mm, you didn't come back liar. with anything. Pointing at the crab. Oh, yes, the one crab. There's plenty of other crabs. Uh, you know about the crabs? Yes, we know about Yes. Them. And I'm, like, gripping the arms very tight. Uh, and, um, like, treading water. Yes. Oh. Oh, dear. Um... Maybe we can make a deal. Listening. Get me out of the water first. Maybe we can make a better deal. And I'll dunk her under. <laughs> and then pull her back out. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you stop stealing from people and you return what you have taken and maybe just maybe we can see and find a way to feed these mouths that you're speaking of without you having to steal from people <laughs> or i could just let you go and you could just stay here in the water <laughs> she begins grasping onto you Vane, give me a persuasion check with disadvantage please <laughs> Um, Rashana, pull us up. I'll pull them up. Persuasion okay. with disadvantage. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Not great, not terrible. Rashana, you are pulling and pulling these guys up, and it is heavy because they are now waterlogged. Their clothes are all wet. Vane, you are holding on to this little goblin girl, and she disappears. The crab falls what? into your hands then. I grab the uh, crab. Mm -hmm. What? Is see... the crab still like just chill? It seems to be for the time being. And then you see uh, just a few feet away from Rock and Roshana, the goblin girl reappears again, the bluster of silvery smoke. <laughs> crab her. Oh, crab her. <laughs> No, no, I'm willing to do a deal, but not with him. Pointing at Vane. Fine, then let's make a deal. I can... I can bring you to the rest of us. Okay. In time, you could tell us why. Because I don't think it's only to feed mouths. Well, for us it is. Um, for them it's not. Yeah. Uh, it it really be, would be easier if we got back to the back to our shop. Sounds like a plan. Fine, and take us there. And no funny business. I'm gonna climb out of the water, up to the place. Hmm. It's gonna take us some time now because. My boat's gone. We've got 
We've got all night. Okay. And she begins somberly walking. Uh, not along the shipyard route now. She begins walking back this way. Not, damn it, again. <laughs> so you were roughly here beforehand. Uh-huh. And she begins walking mm-hmm. a bit more inward. Oh. Well, Bane's gonna uh, thaw the turgy. His eyes, so they're really red and annoyed. I'll keep an eye on so, like, our... instead, instead of silver. <laughs> You're a hostage. Oh my god. I mean, with the way <laughs> Fane treated this this humanly <laughs> hey, gobbling. Right. How much? Right. Six months. Pretty much every night. How much money do you reckon they've stolen from that place? Not just from me. Hundreds not, by it's, now. It's not cool. It's not cool. It's not. So. Veins a little bit, you know, touchy. Of course. But I'm holding a crab. Good. Hold it. Um, but yeah, my eyes are like glaring daggers into this goblin. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're very red, and, like fiery. Yeah, she just rolls her eyes at you and begins uh, running forward. Nice jog. Yeah. Okay. Will follow very, very closely. Mm-hmm. You walk down towards the end of the road. It takes you about another hour and a half. It's about, uh, we'll say about ooh, half four, five ish now in the morning. Uh, before you see the goblin, people are already starting to begin their day. Uh, those who start their work at six o'clock are already getting up. They're looking yeah. around. Uh, Getting their horses and carts ready. You see, this goblin is very looking about very shiftily, though, as they obviously don't want to be seen. Throw their sodden hood back up again, and uh, they take a steep turn this way. Sorry, they went this way, then this way, down to this road, and then down this way. They seem to be running towards the river again. Before you see, they take another turn right what looks to be the back of a large building. She goes, Does it seem familiar? Uh, doesn't seem to be. You haven't really been down this part of the Western Quarter before. Are there any okay. signs up? The building? Uh, it looks to be a tavern, maybe, at the front. Uh, the Sodden Clam, as it's called. Hmm. But this appears to be the back of it, and... She points down to a small hatch, and she goes, Um, Alfred, right, we're going to have to go down. Then go down. She begins pulling, pulling, pulling at the, uh, at the water-seeped wood of the hatch, and eventually it gives, and a few splinters go flying. And she kind of tosses the hatch over to the side of the clunk, and she begins walking down these steps. Do you follow? follow. Okay. Same. Begin walking down and down and down. And you're like, surely if this was a cellar, you would have reached the bottom by now, but you don't. And it begins to get darker and darker and darker. Would Kato be able to see? Kato cannot. I, I, can, I can see within 10 feet. I will do a thing. Now you can see. Appreciated. You're very welcome. Yep. Yeah. See, the goblin begins walking further and further down. The air becomes quite musty and surprisingly dry, given that you were just by the river. We, we've been in the sewers. This is fine. <laughs> this, is, this is better than sewers. You reach the... It looks to be like the very bottom of the steps before she takes another quick turn again. She goes, Ah, this way. Sure. Mm-hmm. Another set of steps go down further and further again. But you begin to see large recesses in the walls. 
down this very narrow set of stairs. These look to be crypts of some kind. You Ominous. Beginning to realise might be in the catacombs that have been spoken about so often. At least in your circle and whatnot within the city. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still staring daggers at this goblin lady. Mm -hmm. um, I'll say how much further? We got quite a bit to go. How, how old is this goblin? Does it seem like a, a child or just a, a small woman? Somewhere in between, you think? Airing more mm. on the side of a child, like an... Mm -hmm. Probably like a teenager. In goblin mm -hmm. terms. Right. She begins running forward again. And eventually you turn once more to your left this time. And the area opens up quite... To be quite wide. This long stretch of path, dusty path, and again set into the walls you see again, these large recesses that you stare down and they're just completely pitch black, they are so far even as you walk across this dusty path you see that there are a few tombs here as well just open tombs. in the ground they're open? Uh, not open, sorry. Um, oh. Just like in the open area is what I was okay. trying to say. Okay. <laughs> That's my bad. Okay. <laughs> They're just like uh, on either side of you as you're walking down. Seems to be like a procession almost. You really Anything noteworthy on the tombs? Or... Sorry? Anything noteworthy on the tombs? Uh, give me a quick investigation check, please. Does it, uh, how, how, how big are the tombs? Uh, they are incredibly dusty, Vishana, so it's not surprising that you can't find anything. Um, sorry, kid, what were you saying? How, how big are they? To be, mm, some of them like, are would they... big enough for an adult, and then others seem to be much larger, probably for a few dozen okay. or so burials. And then behind them, then you again you see the walls with the recesses in them. Mm -hmm. Can I um, note like the directions and stuff we're going in, so that if we need to make our way back? Yep. Sure Thank thing. You. I'm so angry. Does it seem like um, there's one path, or is it like a whole bunch of different corridors and? four-way stops well in this little stretch you're in right now it just seems to be a straight path but yeah as you continue onwards you do see there are numerous different roads and corridors and everything kind of just tapering off from this stretch of road quote-unquote beneath the city yeah. paris Cat. i'll make a i'll make a note too of the directions some of them are you know immediately perpendicular like i said a four-way uh, intersection mm -hmm. as such, and then others just seem to randomly poke in to this stretch. You see the goblin girl begins hurrying up a little bit. Fran! We're almost there! Alright. And eventually she takes a sharp left again. Um actually towards the wall of the catacomb itself and you see that this time there isn't recesses there aren't like slots where bodies were placed before mm -hmm. though it's right beside an area it's it's odd but you're looking at it and you realize that this part of the wall basically has been excavated so whatever remains or uh whatnot have been placed into the wall have been removed and in its place there is a ladder just quick before we go any further. Mm -hmm. Um I'm still holding Mr. Krabs. Okay. <laughs> I figured. <laughs> um can I look at it and whisper 
Um, is this some kind of trap? And the crab looks at you, kind of cleans his eyes for a second, and then tentative, tentatively goes click, click. Okay. I'll carry on then. Um, it's just up here. You see the goblin begins scurrying up the uh, the ladder. Uh, can I grab the goblin and pull her back? Eh. Perhaps one of us should go first. I'll go. Okay. She drops down again. Be my guest. I'll go first. Mm -hmm. mm. Just picking my head through first to see what's up there. Yeah. And what you see, Roshana, is a long, long, very narrow ladder. Like this tiny little hole this ladder has been placed into. And you can barely, through here? barely see the top. It's going to be a tight squeeze, but it mm. seems like it should be okay. Okay. You gotta wiggle your shoulders. <laughs> Big lady. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Let's go up then. Yeah. Rashawn, you begin climbing up and up and up and up <laughs> and it seems to be going on forever <laughs> you're kind of like this, this is this isn't right this isn't okay but eventually <laughs> you do see an opening at the very top and it looks to be like some kind of ceiling above it so you're thinking you're probably going to arrive in some kind of room and eventually you do your head peeks up over and you seem to be in some kind of basement or cellar you're not entirely certain but you look around uh, there are numerous different boxes uh, stacks and crates a few barrels as you're looks. peeking around again completely dark down here but you could just make this out with your dark vision uh -huh. uh, let's see. Um, after Ashana had started going up I would have let the gutter goblin go mm -hmm. Um, the other goblin? The only goblin. I thought you called um, her gutter goblin a second, that's so rude. <laughs> <laughs> this bitch! Um, <laughs> uh, and then I will, um, follow the goblin. Mm -hmm. oh. right here. Yeah, staying within, like, quick grab range. Rest of you all clamber up, I'm assuming. Yep. Yeah. And like I said, it is a long, long, slightly claustrophobic climb up this uh, very. Yeah, what are we? What are we feet. talking? The feet wise. Dude, I don't do feet. I don't That's fucking fine. know. Fine, <laughs> feeders. <laughs> well, since the only American here, and we're fucking stuck doing miles, feet. I don't bloody know. Um, <laughs> Enter Miles. Uh, it's just about big enough that when you're climbing up, uh, if you were to tip your head backwards, you would probably hiss. Ooh. Yeah. If you were any bigger, like if you were a size up, class wise, like, oh my God. You, you would be struggling to get through. I've been there. <laughs> well, it was made for goblins. The very or children. Top, you uh, managed to get out of this very tiny little rabbit hole. And uh, the goblin turns towards you and goes, Um, okay. Um, um, this way. So, uh... And shows another much shorter ladder this time, and you can see it also leads to another hatch. She climbs up it and pushes again on the uh, wooden hatch from below, kind of clicking the latch out of the way as she does so. And the bright light hits your eyes once more. Uh, it seems to be, you know, very early morning. The sky doesn't seem to be too bad. Uh, as 
she waits for you all to clamber out again on the other side of the river. Oh. Oh, wow. Lovely here. Oh, okay. Interesting. Wait. Adventure's good, so. Hmm, okay. Interesting. I swear to God, if Luxon's behind us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna punch him in the have mouth. A, have a nice walk. <laughs> um, this fucking guy. Okay, uh, we have to be quick. I don't want anyone to see me. Of course. And she begins running once more. It's... Run, run after. Big steps. <laughs> yeah, big, big steps. It's another nice little jaunt. Uh, you're running through the Adventurous District once more. It's... At least it's a familiar sight, but given the circumstances of what you've just seen, and where you're going now, it seems to be very shady business, and... Were you walking in the direction of the shop? Um, Monty's shop. Or Monty's brother's old shop. Well, funny you should say that. Hmm. Mm. Oh. Yeah, I, thought was... I thought that was, uh... Huh. Yeah. Yeah. It reaches about, uh, we'll say 9 o'clock in the morning. You guys are fucking tired <laughs> after running. But... <sighs> God. You do we... find yourself outside a familiar looking shop vein. The old oh, old oh my bitch. god. Large, dilapidated building. Um, you see, most of the windows have been barricaded by wood. Uh, again, it's that pagoda style almost uh, structure of the building. Mm -hmm. Again, you see the front of the building. Um, with the Montagoras Magic Emporium painted in blue and gold above the door, though it's quite faded. Uh, some of the letters are completely washed away, washed away with the rain. The front doors have been barricaded also with these huge slats of wood uh, nailed across the front. And beneath the boards, you see the original for sale um, that was kind of painted on, and then somebody had smeared across it with the words never in capital letters right you see the goblin girl begins walking towards the shop and then careening around to the other side do you follow um, well, yeah, yes definitely. yep you follow her and you see she's got her hood back up again she's scurrying a bit forward kind of glancing in through the broken panes and the gaps between the slats of wood as she's going around the side of the building. Excuse me. As you've reached the other side of the building, immediately opposite where the front doors were, you see another set of doors that were boarded as well at some point, but the wood has been torn off, you assume? Incompletely in places, but there's enough free room to allow one of the doors to move inwards slightly um, it's hanging partially ajar as you approach it and oddly there appears to be a open close sign haphazardly hanging <laughs> from uh, yeah. the actual handle of the door itself the string is frayed though so it's it's just hanging there limply and swaying slightly um, mm -hmm. you do hear a slight rattling coming from inside the building as the wind blows through it and the whole building and the shutters and everything else just seem to jitter slightly. Uh, right now, though, looking at the little sign that's on the door, it says open. And the goblin girl walks up to it and ducks her head beneath one of the uh, boards that wasn't removed. And she turns towards you and she goes, um, it's in here. I'll try to go inside. Yeah. Okay. And I think we'll take a break there, guys, because Rook is just coming and I need a cough. So, Go okay. cough. Uh, I need a cough. We'll give the dog some attention because she's been whining for like 10 minutes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be...